Hello, my lovelies. Have you fallen for history bounding because you've watched the lovely Bernadette videos on YouTube and are ready to try dressing more like her? Probably love watching those dreamy videos and get the urge to sew yourself a walking skirt and Edwardian shirtwaist and go picnic by a lake. I mean, let's admit it. We, we all dream about that. But do you know where to start to make this dream a reality? We're going to chat about that today. If you're new here, my name is Althea and I'm here to talk about sewing, having ADHD, all things history bounding and historical clothing so you can creatively thrive through the art of sewing. Today I'm going to be talking about how to start history bounding because we all need more fun and whimsy in our lives. For many of us, watching Bernadette's videos was the first exposure to history bounding. Or it might have been Abby or Nicole or Carolina or any of the lovely people making videos to share their love of historical clothing. When you watch the videos and see them making and wearing stunning clothes, it speaks to you, doesn't it? You may not be able to pinpoint exactly why you're drawn to history bounding, but there's a longing to step into a Wardian photograph or a Renaissance painting. You may not know where to start, so we're going to talk about that today. Because we all start somewhere and we all have bring different skills, desires, and resources to this fun endeavor. And it is fun, otherwise why would we do it? So let's chat about how to get you started on your own history bounding journey. After watching Bernadette sew on her treadle machine and use her hand operated sewing machine, some of you may have even bought a treadle sewing machine. I'm not gonna name names though. Okay, who's kidding? It was me. I bought a treadle sewing machine. <laughs> I'm learning how to fix her up, but you don't need a treadle sewing machine to history bound your wardrobe. There are many ways to do this and there are no wrong ways to do this. I want to make this really clear. You can use modern sewing methods and machines to history bound. Remember, you're not making historical replicas, but rather interpretations of historical clothing. When you history bound, you are stepping outside of the normal way of dressing. And for many people, that has major appeal. Others may not be as comfortable wearing something to make themselves stand out or draw attention to themselves. So their history bounding might be a little bit more subtle. It could be, you know, a cameo pin at a lapel. It could be a hairstyle. It could be a pair of reproduction shoes or eyeglasses. Both ways can bring joy and whimsy and lightheartedness into wardrobes. Something that I frequently hear though is, you know, I don't look like Bernadette or Carolina. I can't history bound because I'm not slim and young and pretty and female. And I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can. You don't have to ask for permission from anyone to start history bounding and wearing historically inspired clothing. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be slim and willowy. You don't even have to be the lighter shade of pale. You don't have to pick a gender. Because if dressing this way makes your heartstrings go twang, well, you just go ahead and do it, my dears. If you're watching this video, you are probably already have a passing familiarity with the notion of history bounding or have an interest in historical clothing. And the basic idea is to adopt historical clothing or historically inspired clothing into your everyday wear. It could be a simple thin velvet ribbon bow tie on a collared blouse or you could look like you stepped out of a Renoir painting. I mean, that's the beauty of it. You can do as much or as little as you want. There are no rules. You don't have to buy a membership in an exclusive club. You don't have to ask for permission. You don't even have to stick to one time period. You can mix and match as you like, even in the same outfit. You only have to do what makes you happy. While there are no prescriptive rules, certainly no history bounding police, there are some ways that you can get started in being successful, guidelines if you will. Feel free to adapt and modify to your own use and betterment. These ideas and tips are just your starting point. Where you go and how far you go is up to you. So the first thing you need to think about is, you know, deciding on your purpose for your history bounding. What do you want to get out of history bounding? Do you want to do total immersion like V. Birchwood? I mean, some people have jumped in with both feet and dress every day as if they live in another time. Their clothing is an extension of a persona that they choose to display every single day. And very often they make their clothes by hand and they're wearing less history bounding than replicas of historical clothing. You can do bits and bobs and subtle nods to not freak out the mundanes. Um, some people do very subtle nods to historical clothing in their otherwise modern wardrobe. They might be wearing an Edwardian pin tucked blouse with a suit jacket 
or a 1940s inspired wool skirt as part of office attire. They may feel like they can't dress in a more obviously historical fashion, but still can find a few ways to pull in a bit of antique flair. And there's a vast expanse between those two poles in which to play with historical dress. You have all of history and human experience at your fingertips, so go play, have fun, find your joy. It's not all or nothing with history bounding. You can wear your modern clothing most of the time and have your history bounding pieces to enjoy. You can choose to wear historically inspired clothing every day or just occasionally. I mean, my daily wear is some version of tunics and leggings and when I feel like it, I can pull out my bounding clothes or when I'm doing a video on history bounding. <laughs> You make your own rules, so have fun with it. Like most people, I am terrible at examining my own motives. We all know we should do this more often to make sure that our ways of thinking are working best for us. I mean, I do history bounding because I'm moving away from fast, unsustainable clothing. I like the details, the textures, the differentness of history bounding clothing. I've never been one to follow trends and I suspect many of you watching the video are the same way. Another reason why I make these clothing is that I like a challenge. Diving into research for a particular time period, learning how they made their clothes and the significance of the textiles and the dress, I really love that. In our modern culture, clothing is a throwaway item. I mean, in the past, making the fabrics and then sewing the clothes was an investment in time and resources. The wealth we have in our closets would be incomprehensible to most people throughout human history. You don't have to pick just one time period and then do that for forevermore, but maybe concentrate on one era to start with as you get started. This will make it easier to create cohesive looks and a wardrobe. You might look at some of the more recent time periods as there are more resources available when you're doing your research because the further back you go in time, the less is known about how clothing was made and worn. My area of special historical clothing research is 6th century Merovingian clothes. And let me tell you, that's a tough game to play. We only have a handful of surviving garments and very little archaeological or historical records. So choosing to start your history bounding journey in the 1900s and onward would be much easier, especially if you are a beginner sewist. So when you're looking for sources of inspiration, I mean, seriously, uh, we have so many ways of being inspired these days and learning more about historical clothing just in general, because it's in our media all over the place. I mean, seriously, where do I start? There's so many options out there. There's, there's movies and television shows and fandoms. Uh, you know, you have shows like Bridgerton and, um, you know, all of the other uh, historical dramas out there that you can kind of play with. You have all of those World War II spy thrillers, you know, so there's a lot of media that you can look at and see what kind of clothing you would like to wear. Another way to look at it is, you know, what periods of history are you most interested in? I mean, where would you go if you could time travel safely and if safety were no issue? Modern science and medicine is a real necessity. Does any time period or culture speak to you? Is there family history that you would like to research? Do you want to look into what your ancestors would have worn? And then we have books. You know, Jane Austen has launched a thousand closets and costumes. I mean, look at the popularity of Bridgerton and the zillion adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. There is a lot of material there that you can pull into your own wardrobe. Lord of the Rings or the Game of Thrones, no, not exactly history bounding. It's close enough and has ways that you can fantasy bound to your little hobbit's heart's content. The customers drew upon many historical periods for the people of Middle Earth. The Rohan were based on Norse cultures, the hobbits on a pastoral Victorian lifestyle, and elves on 12th century high romance periods. So any book with any history can be a source of information. Once you decide on a time period to start with, now you have to get the clothes, right? And there's options for all budget levels. While you can spend a ton of money on clothing, you can also find really budget-friendly options. Economic resources should not be a barrier to following your desire to history bound. So here are some ways that you can build your history bounding wardrobe. There has been an explosion in new sewists taking up the needle over the last few years. A fair number of them are new history bounders wanting to make something to wear for themselves. 
There are literally millions of videos on YouTube to help you learn how to sew. Tutorials for making historical clothing or costumes are all over the internet. Sewing can be learned, so don't let skill level stop you. You can also hire someone to make the clothes for you. I mean, this can be fairly expensive because sewing is a skill and artisans should be paid fairly for their work. But if you have the resources or you can barter your skills and trade, this is an option for you. Another option is to purchase ready-made historical clothing from a retailer. There are companies out there that sew historically adequate ready-to-wear. Etsy is a good place to look for both custom and ready-to-wear clothing. So enjoy that rabbit hole. You can also find more modern clothing that can pass as history bounding. There are companies like Ishakti that make clothes that could easily be worn for bounding. Let us know in the comments below if you have a favorite retail or online source for historical clothing. Let's enable each other. Another place to look for inexpensive clothes is in thrift shops and charity shops, especially if you are bounding more modern times. This also makes your wardrobe more sustainable, which we should all be working towards. I mean, clothing companies and textile companies could stop making new products today and it would be decades before we ran out of usable clothing to reuse and recycle and upcycle. I mean, this outfit here is almost entirely thrifted right down to the jewelry. The, the top is, you know, a, a lightweight cotton with pin tucks in it that I can use in a lot of different ways. Uh, this vest, it's Cold Water Creek. I bought it second hand. So there's a whole number of ways that you can find really good modern clothing, well-made modern clothing, that can serve as history bounding. One thing to keep in mind as you shop in thrift stores and charity shops for clothes to use in history bounding is that many people do not have the economic resources to buy new clothing. They rely on second hand clothes being cheaply available. I know as a single mom with two small kids, I rarely bought new clothes either for myself or the kids. So now I avoid buying clothes that someone might need for wearing to work. And I rarely buy clothes too large for me to cut down to my size. It can be astonishingly hard to find plus sized, well-made clothes in thrift stores. And I cringe to see some of these videos of wee tiny people upcycling a plus size garment. The world is already stacked against people with larger bodies. Let's not add to that load. So thrift responsibly and with consideration to others. You need to start somewhere. It can be small, like adding accessories for secret history bounding until you get up the courage to do something more grand. It can be all in with a full-on Edwardian suit and blouse and walking skirt and, you know, jaunty hat. How you do it is up to you. That's the fun in the history bounding game. There are no rules or gatekeepers. If you would like to have a solid set of clothes to draw from to live your best history bounding life, I recommend thinking holistically and making a coordinated wardrobe. A capsule wardrobe, if you will. I mean, having a coordinated set of clothes makes it much easier to reduce decision fatigue when you're staring at the closet in the morning trying to decide what to wear. So in a nutshell, the goal of a capsule wardrobe is that everything goes with everything. Each top will match all of the bottoms and coordinate with all of the other items in the wardrobe. The concept grew in the early 20th century, but really gained steam in the early 21st century as people embraced minimalism and other forms of shedding the yoke of material goods. I'll link to another video in the description below that I made on capsule wardrobes, so that you, or you can watch the full playlist at the end of this video. So let's go over how a capsule wardrobe is put together, starting with the building blocks. It's, you know, start with the basics building blocks of a capsule wardrobe. You have your under things, you have your foundations, you have tops, bottoms, dresses, jackets, sweaters, coats, and your bling. The key is coordination. Have a color palette in mind as you start to plan. If you don't know where to start, start with neutrals. You can always add more color later as you learn what you like and will actually wear. And have fun with this. After all, you're doing this because you love historical clothing and want to bring it into your daily wear. The history bounding is all about the joy of making clothes that delight you right down to your core. And don't be intimidated by your favorite YouTubers. Find inspiration in what they do. And remember, they all started out as newbies too. You're getting the polished image that they project through their video. You don't see that they too have to rip out seams just like us mortals. So if you're looking for inspiration, binge watch Bernadette or Rachel or Nicole, and then get out your pen and paper, your Pinterest board or your sketchbook, and go down that rabbit hole because we're all mad here. 
Hey, let's continue the conversation in the comments below. I love hearing your plans and sharing your enthusiasm in the community here. I will link to my history bounding playlist at the end of this video. I think you might like those videos too. Let me know if there's any more topics that you would like to see me cover in future videos and, and check out the resources in the description below. And until next time, I bid you joy.